Good morning. It is May 14th, 2023, and I am in Cottonwood, Arizona, Zone 8B, and this is my spring garden tour for the year. Um, I figured this is a good time to do it because we're right in between all of the um, winter crops getting harvested and all of the summer crops going in. So I'm going to start a little differently this time, and I'm going to start with the greenhouse because we've done a lot of expansion outside and I thought this would be good before all the swap coolers and all the noisy stuff starts. But anyway, here we've got some succulents and the herb bed. And if you've seen any of my videos before, you know we've had some pest issues in here. So I've been trying to rehabilitate my citrus trees, which there's the lemon, it's looking pretty good. Here's a little... Uh, Mandarin orange. It's also doing much better. We've got some huge kale. A few tomatoes starting to come in. Horseradish, which probably should be outside and not in here. Here are all my starts. Many things still getting ready to go out. Some things still just being seeded. But uh, eggplant and peppers, some jalapenos coming back, some new hot peppers that I've replaced. This jalapeno's actually been in here for almost three years, so that one's doing great. Lettuce, we're having some issues with lettuce. Here's some starts that are going to go in, um, and these ones were specifically for high heat tolerance from Johnny Seeds, so we'll see how those do compared to some of these others. But I've been having like a pill bug infestation, roly-polies. I know people think they're just nice little things, but they're not. They are they can really destroy plants. Here's a little cucumber plant. Look what they did to that stem. You see that? They just skeletonized it. So, anyway, figuring out some organic methods for getting rid of them. And scale, which was taking out my citrus trees. But uh, I think I've got that mostly under control. I've got the hydrofogger going because we are in a very dry climate here. Um, here are some... Kind of cooler temperature crops I'm trying out. This is some actually some poppies, some humphrey, um, plantain, and actually wasabi down here. This would be kind of cool if we can get some wasabi. I did do uh, harvest ginger last year in here, and there's some ginger starting to come back up. So, oh, that's pretty much what's going on in here. Trying to figure out what makes the most sense for indoor growing versus outdoor growing. And now I'll take you outside. All right, well, for summer crops, we just got in our okra and hibiscus. So there's eight hibiscus and I think about 10 okra. They're in the same family. They do really well. They get huge. You're not going to believe how big these things are in about six months. And the sunflower is coming up. Artichokes coming up. These are year two for these artichokes. I'm going to be planting some more. I've got some starts. They start really easily from seed. We've been eating them. They're delicious. And more sunflowers. And here is a row of a variety of mostly sweet peppers, some poblano. Peppers did fantastically last year, so I'm going to do lots and lots of peppers. Tomatoes. Here are these went in about I would say a month ago, so maybe mid, mid-April. Um, these are cherry tomatoes, and then over here we've got the bigger tomatoes, and I am staking them up just on strings. So there's like a string that goes down, and you just wind it around, and you keep one single leader. When it gets to the top, I'm not exactly sure where we're going to go, but we'll you know, deal with that when the time comes. We have me over here making lots of noise are some red broilers. So those are meat chickens and they're about six weeks old. They're babies. Oh, there's magic. Hi, magic. Peppers. And then we have onions. So these onions came from plant sets in February. These are yellow onions. Over there is a bed of the red onions. And here is some spinach. This is hammerhead spinach. It did great here. I think you can grow it all 
winter. I'm going to try growing it all winter. But I'm going to pull this out today because it's starting to bolt. If you can see like that little bit right there, that means it's time to get out of the ground. I'll take a quick peek over here along the greenhouse. Is flower. These are all the flowers. Um, actually getting some poppies. They're not quite as showy as they were last year because we had a much colder spring. And it's only really just kind of started to feel like spring with 80 degree days. I threw some um, zucchini in here, starting to get a little of that. And okay, back over to the beds. We've got beets. Now these beets are doing well and these are actually, these went in last fall and I am going to be pulling these out, I think today, because they are ready and it's going to start getting into the 90s. All right, garlic. So we've got two beds of garlic. Those went in at the beginning of October and they are coming out in the next couple of weeks. Now they're starting to die back. That's not a bad thing. That's what it's supposed to do. Um, here, let me see. If you look down in here, you can see these are really starting to get some nice big, big bulbs. So I think in the next couple weeks we'll be able to pull them up and dry them. These ones are little and I've been um, pulling some up and just using them as green garlic. Okay, this big bed here is potatoes. And the potatoes went in in March, I think March. And uh, they're already starting to flower. So I think I'm going to need to pull the flowers off to try to get more energy to go into the tubers. And then once these vines start dying back, um, harvest them like a few weeks later. So I think they've got maybe a month, month and a half. And there is arugula coming up everywhere because I let it go to seed and now we can harvest it literally off of the ground, which is kind of funny. Peas, kale, all this stuff that went in right, I think March, like after the frost was mostly over. Here's some of the garlic I'm drying to test out. It's not quite, it doesn't have quite the defined cloves it needs to dry completely. So give it a little bit more time. All right, let's take a quick peek over here and check on the bees because we put new bees in. These are um, Saskatraz bees. They're a different variety. The Italians I put in last year did not make it. Um, let's see if we can see. There's a lot of pollen coming in. And if we look close, there we go. So if you see on their legs, you'll see yellow. And that means big chunks of pollen going in. And when there's pollen going in, it means the queen is doing well. And that's really all you need to know. As far as hive inspections, it's kind of a hands-off method right here. Pollen goes in, bees are good. And I'll leave them alone and leave it at that. Over here, I hear some quail crowing. I'm not going to open it up, but they're all doing pretty well. We've got some growing out underneath. We've got some breeding pairs up above. Are you in there? Where are you? There's the little white ones down here. They're shy little birds, but they're doing well. Okay, back to the garden. Magic is definitely the tour guide. <laughs> all right, apple tree. This is two years. Lots of apples. This is a Braeburn. We'll see how this does. Um, this little in the ground bed is got bush beans and fava beans. And I think, and a lot of arugula, of course, coming up everywhere. Oh, there's a big bean. So yeah, the fava beans, I think they also went in about March from seed. We've got one bed of carrots from February. And they are doing great. We've been thinning them and eating them as baby carrots, but they're doing great. This bed just had Armenian cucumbers planted. They're just starting to come up. These are a great type of cucumber, technically a melon, that grows in high heat and they get huge. And you can use them like cucumbers and you can pickle them. And I've made relish and all kinds of stuff with them. I really, I really am a fan. Um, especially since it's hard to grow regular cucumbers when it's 110 degrees. Okay, more sort of volunteer plants. Here is a fig. Definitely fig tree coming in. And then a peek around here. We've got some nice flowers coming up. This is um, 
a lot of the medicinal type stuff. There's some echinacea coming up. There's some yarrow. There's my dandelions I've been eating for the last month or so. We've got some beautiful flowers coming in. So, yeah, just try to keep mostly flowers around the outside of the greenhouse, and that's been working. All right, well, now I'm going to take a quick peek at the expansion. I guess this video is going to get kind of long because our garden keeps growing. Oh, one more thing. This is cool. This is our persimmon tree, and it was just a little stump when we moved here, and we've been rehabilitating it for the last couple of years, and it's starting to really get happy. And these, this is kind of cool. This is what the um, flowers look like on a persimmon. So they're really interesting looking. And then these will have ripe fruit um, in the fall. And I love persimmons. This is a Fuyu persimmon. It does well here. It's a little frost sensitive, but it's worth, it's worth it. I love it. It's happy. It's doing great. Okay. Now for the orchard expansion, we have been doing quite a bit here. And I will take you up to the top and just give you a quick overview of what we have going. It always looks a little rough in the beginning, but give it a year or two and this should be as integrated looking as the original garden there. This is a goji berry. Um, I'm going to repot it. And this is a uh, grapevine that I'm going to try to run up this fence. And strawberries in barrels, which were in a courtyard. But this is kind of be like the berry area. We're getting some nice strawberries in there. This long bed is uh, thornless blackberries and thornless raspberries. And when these get a little bigger, we're going to stake a trellis along this entire bed. All right, over here we have four of our fruit trees that just went in in February. Two apricot, two cherry. Over here... We have a um, plum tree. That's a Santa Rosa. It's a good pollinator. We've started putting in more garden beds. These ones with the trellises. We've I've got some uh, winter squash and loofah and gourds planted in these first two. And then the second two, I've got a whole bunch of different types of melons. Cantaloupes, little watermelons, all kinds of stuff. So it's going to be really cool to see if we can train them up and over these tunnel arch. Um, Here's our first big bed in there. I'm going to be doing sweet potatoes. We'll be doing five more of these beds. And then we're going to be putting up a little carport at the end there for this tractor, which has been the best thing to have to fill these giant beds ever. Because two years ago with the other garden, we did it all by hand, and it took forever. The tractor can do it in about 20 minutes, what so took about two days before. So I'm glad we've got it. Okay, so now more trees. Here are two kumquats and two peaches, two apples, two, pl uh, what are these? These are pears, two pears. And we've got one Asian pear. And then over here we've got two almond trees. So these are the all you need almonds. I think they're self pollinating. They're supposed to do well here, so we should see, like I said, we're in zone 8B, so winter temperatures are, you know, in the 20s, so kumquats are kind of pushing it. Olives, these are a bunch of big olive trees. Here's a couple more plums up there. These are fruiting olives, and they should be okay for our zone. We will see, but it will be awesome to be able to make our own fermented olives and treats and things like that, but we've got two manzanillo and two mission and these trees we had brought up from phoenix they're um about i think they're eight-year-old trees so they really should be producing right away and they're beautiful and they're going to get big and nice and they stay green all year i love olive trees so this is pretty exciting the other new one that's pretty cool here is pistachios so we've got three pistachio trees here and i will show you these are pretty cool you can actually see some of the pistachios growing which I have never seen before here they are those are so cool let me get around this side yep there's a pistachio I just think that's 
so neat. Anyway, this is the orchard. It's got a ways to go, but we did a, we came pretty far with it. And it's going to be really fun to see these trees grow and have new beds to fill with everything. So anyway, that is my spring update for 2023. Take care and happy Mother's Day if I didn't already say that. Bye-bye.